welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, I'm here in Wales talking about fishing with Howell Morgan. I'm meeting a charming young couple who've made their business fox hunting. But first, we're going thermal. We're going fox shooting. Night vision is so 2013. 2014 is all about thermal, thanks to Darren Rogers, better known as the Prince of Darkness on our air gunning programme Airheads, bringing along his guide thermal unit, we're producing some quite terrible images. Here are some unflattering shots of our foxes tonight, starting with Roy Umpa Lumpa Lupton, Gary, the little known seventh member of Village People, and David looking like a Roy Orbison tribute act from Beyond the Grave. Needless to say, Darren remains the other side of the thermal for this picture. As well as a superb spotting tool, thermal also shows Roy's glow. Now, we know he has a natural aura anyway, but today it is supercharged thanks to a thermal waistcoat he's been sent to test. It doesn't need a bigger one. This is perfect. It's meant to be snug. It's a snug fit, and we'll see how it performs later on. Let's crack on with those foxes. After the other day when we came in here and we squeaked the fox in, but unfortunately David was having trouble and he was doing his best Mr Magoo impression and couldn't see the fox in front of his face. The big thing with the big pointy ears and the long nose is foxy, yes, in front of you. We have a customer in the distance, but he isn't budging. Roy uses mouth calls and the Western River too. The thermal picks up the deer in the distance and a few rabbits, but nothing fox-like appears. Our next field offers Darren a great chance. He's using night vision tonight and the Nightmaster IR Illuminator draws in the fox like a tractor beam. It's a done deal. I think David should have got that one on camera, hopefully. So uh, it was quite a large fox, he shouldn't have been able to miss it. Uh, we'll see if we get any more. You are getting some abuse tonight, aren't you? Sorry, mate. Sorry, I hope I don't miss. That's not nice, is it? Why would you say something like that? That really is quite cruel, isn't it? Come on, let's go get one. It's a beautiful evening with a clear sky. We're finding foxes. This next one is a little shrewder. Giving us a bit of a run around, Roy has to get above it. In the process of coming up we spooked it and it went down into the thicket there and was obviously making its way through the bracken. Ah. We squeaked a little bit more and just got it to look back, put the lamp on it again, it disappeared and silver, we just held it? the lamp above it so I could get the scope somewhere near it and that just as Darren pulled the light down onto it, it just allowed me enough time to get a shot. So, second one in. Tonight, Roy's using the Australian-made Max Box Magnetic Rifle Rest from Pro Duck and Goose Hunting Supplies. It was actually meant for Mr Crow, but as he's been giving the budgie smugglers an airing in some hot climate, he hasn't been around to stop Lupton nicking the swag bags he has blagged. Ditched the bipod just to give this a go, and so far I'm very impressed with it. It holds the rifle really nicely, and it's very easy just to swing about. It gives you a real steady, almost bench rest form of shooting, so for long range shots, I would have thought that's going to be really good. It's also got magnets in it, which obviously for the, uh, the top of the gator, because we've got a wooden top, it's not going to do an awful lot tonight. But if you were shooting over the top of a pickup or whatever else, then it would be superb. But so far, I'm impressed with it, and I will be until I miss one from it. The fox is a large dog fox with impressive canines. Oh, he's got some gnashes on him, isn't he? Look at the size of them. After admiring the dentistry, Darren's back in the chair. Roy's calling works again, and again we have to manoeuvre to get ourselves in a position with a suitable backstop. We've got a full moon tonight, so it's not the ideal conditions. We are literally lit up like pimples on the backside. But he ran down to the hedgerow here, 
and as we've come down he was crossing back in to come back into the thicker cover in here and stopped perfectly right in the middle so uh, offering a fantastic opportunity we just pulled the gator up Darren got on him squeezed the shot and we're number three in for the evening this time it's a vixen. Now, as we're heading toward midnight, the temperature is falling, but someone on the gator is feeling warm and smug. Sorry, snug. So you've got three different heat levels. So I'm not that cold yet, so I'll leave it on a medium. I'll give it on a, I'll, I'll warm up on a nice two there and see what that does. How Hang long on. does it take to actually cook a lupsin? To cook a lupsin? I don't know. <laughs> what is it normally about 15 to 18 minutes per pound for rare? We could be here for a long time. <laughs> we'll see how he's looking with the thermal camera in a bit. Back to the foxes and Roy's in the saddle. To give his mouth a rest, the Western River's call is blaring out the familiar tunes. Roy has uploaded some of his own calls which have been successful. So we've got one on the harmonica type from Best Fox Call and we've got another one on the uh, Silver Fox. And what we've done is uh, downloaded those as MP3s. David sent them over to me and we've put them on the, the uh, caller there and it does work quite well. So uh, towards this end of the night when your lips are feeling a bit puckered out, you can just sit back and play it on the machine and you've got exactly the same effect as if you were mouth calling yourself. He's really having to coax those foxes out tonight, but eventually he manages to get one in a shootable position. So four in the bag, and as Darren says, we've had worse, especially given the entourage. Been two cameramen, two rifles, someone driving. <laughs> what? Moonlit night. Moonlit night. I think we're doing quite well. We've got four. <laughs> got some daggers on him. This last dog fox is the biggest of the night. All that remains is to show just how toasty Roy's been with his new waistcoat and to make some funny faces, some intentional, some natural. Well, Thermal does give you a different perspective on the world. And for somebody else with a different perspective on the world, it is David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. Farmers are getting rich thanks to rat hunting. Sadly not in the UK, but Vietnam. According to a report in Vietnam Net, workers catch them in fields and then sell them as a delicacy for up to two pounds per pound or five US dollars per kilo. In the local currency, the rat hunters of Hung Ha district earn tens of millions of dong every season. Do you fancy being a gamekeeper for 48 hours? If you're aged between 14 and 16, you could be in with a shot of winning a gamekeeping experience at Newton Rigg College in Cumbria. Backed by Basque and the National Gamekeepers Education Trust, it'll be held at the college on a weekend in July. All you have to do is write a short piece, no more than 200 words, about why you want to come to participate in the experience. With money markets booming, there are some seriously expensive estates up for sale. In Spain, Monte del Duque is for sale in Cáceres, southern Spain, for 40 million euros. Chargot in Somerset is on the market through Savills for 7 million pounds. The World Wildlife Fund gives Namibia a ringing endorsement with a series of films this week. It calls Namibia a powerfully bright spot, whose people have made the commitment to live with and protect their wildlife. Fancy a Land Rover Freelander 2 for a year? The Prince's Countryside Fund was set up to support the people who live and work in the countryside. It's inviting applications for its Land Rover Bursary 2014, where it'll be awarding five inspiring individuals or organisations the use of a Land Rover Freelander 2 for 12 months. In this film, two previous winners explain how it helped them support their community and grow their business. And finally, it's the bird shooting fundraiser that other shooting and conservation groups can only dream of. T. Boone Pickens, the bloke in the film, paid $130,000 in the auction for four VIP tickets to a concert, and he also donated a quail hunt for six couples to his Mesa Vista ranch, which sold for $175,000. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now, let's see what you lot have been up to. It's Hello, Charlie. <laughs> 
here's what the world's up to this week. Hello, Charles. Paul and Callum here. Hello, Charles. Doing a little bit of uh, crow shoeing, making sure that we scare the crows away. The farmer on his drilled barley. Hello, Charlie. Charlie. <laughs> John and Gary here, in the woods, sorting the pens out for next year. Struggling. <laughs> Hello, Charlie. It's Paul here up in sunny Echo Fekin, just out in an evening's door stalking. And uh, we've not done too bad. Send us your own Hello Charlie. Film yourself on your mobile phone. Just a sentence saying Hello Charlie, who you are and what you're up to. Then share it or email it via YouTube, Facebook, Dropbox or you send it, you name it, to charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Now some less happy news. We lost the countryside campaigner Clarissa Dixon Wright this week. She died aged 66 in Edinburgh Royal Infirmary. Countryside organisations united to express their sadness. She was a very well liked and well respected woman and she was a stand up campaigner for everything we believe in. I well remember seeing her at game fairs, sitting having dinner, listening to her stories and I'm sure many many best members and, and everybody who came to the game fairs to see her will miss her and will remember her with, with great fondness. We made several films with Clarissa for the Countryside Alliance. She was always forthright and always quick witted. Here she is shooting from the hip. I mean, to be brutally frank, I don't think the NFU does very much for farmers. I mean, it wasn't the NFU that saved the dairy industry such as it saved. It was Starbucks coffee eyes is selling lattes. I want to see a day um, when the only thing you buy that isn't local rural produce in those palaces of pain, no, the supermarkets, um, is dried goods or things we can't grow ourselves, like lemons. Every West Country pub used to serve, serve badger ham on the bar. You know, like uh, ham on Iberico in a Spanish tablet bar. Like it's a delicious dish, really? like young wild boar. And I've had barbecued badger fillet um, from a <laughs> maize-fed badger, which died in somebody's cornfield. Um, and um, it was... Excellent. Really? Oh yeah. Okay. They're very we'll good to, eating. We'll have to come back and ask you to do that for us. Uh, of course it? I will. I said to the Secretary of State for DEFRA, I said, um, you know, that's your answer, you know, cook them. And um, she said, oh, don't say that. So I said, no, they're very good eating. And um, <laughs> she said, um, oh, but what about the TB? I said, well, presumably you test for TB before you wet them. And she said, well, it's not a very reliable test. I said, well, if, as it's the same test they use on cattle, what does that say about our beef industry? I wouldn't say that if I was you. <laughs> I will miss Clarissa for her sharp sense of humour, for the way she stood up for the ordinary sportsman, the terrierman, the lurcherman, not just the master of foxhounds. She was convicted of hair coursing under Tony Blair's ban. She was a true countryside freedom fighter. Farewell, Clarissa. Now, looking to the future of hunting with hounds, I've been off to the West Country to meet a couple of young people who are making a business out of it. This is why people go hunting on horses in the UK. The chance to gallop madly across beautiful British open country. This GoPro is mounted on Megan Corp's hat. She and Ben Darlington have started a new holiday company offering hunting just like this. So we subscribe to the Blackmore Spotful Vale, which is traditionally, when you go visiting and you say you hunt with the Blackmore Vale, everyone says, oh, you must be able to jump big hedges then. You know, you must be really brave everything like that and I suppose once you get used to it you re realise that it's only kind of a certain percentage of people that jump all the big hedges and are all nuts and fall off all the time and there's plenty of you know of the young and the old and the knowledgeable and the not so knowledgeable that you can chat to and follow through the gates and things like that. You need to know how to ride and riding instructor Megan checks you out at the start of your trip. I take you riding first. <laughs> Every holiday we start with a long ride which gets you comfortable in the saddle you know, if you've come, you know, if you rode yesterday or you rode last year, it's a, it's a good day where you can find your feet again. Now, many people in the country may be labouring under the misapprehension that Ben and Megan have been banned from running holidays like this. I think that people realise in the countryside that um, fox hunting has evolved since the 2004 ban, and despite, you know, limitations which that 
put on it. People still have a lot of fun hunting. They're more people go hunting than ever before. Yeah. So people love to be out in the countryside, and it's changed the face of fox hunting, I think, in a very positive way. The PR, you know, fox hunters are looking to make friends rather than be as ex maybe less, less exclusive than they once were. So it's a fantastic time if you want to come and visit fox hunts. They, you know, they're really open. So it's a, it's a, from that point of view, it's brilliant. Will you write and thank Tony Blair personally? <laughs> <laughs> Don't know about that. It would still maybe, be nice. Maybe he'll, maybe he'll come on one of our things. <laughs> Book a hunting holiday with Blackthorn and Brook and they will meet you at an airport if you're flying in, put you up at a local pub or hotel, mount you and guide you through your hunting day or days. Visit blackthornandbrook.com. From the West Country to Wales, a mysterious country with deep dark lakes and a deep dark fisherman, Howell Morgan. We're so lucky in Wales. Um, we've got such diverse fishing women, you know, it's close to the coast. Whenever you live in Wales, you're close to the coast. Well, some of the best shark fishing in the, in the UK is just off Fishguard. But also, you know, wherever you live, there's a river, there's a, there's a lake. I mean, there's water everywhere. Um, and you cannot help but be a fisherman. Where did you start? <laughs> I had no choice. Um, no, honestly, I had no choice. Uh, when I was born, um, an old lady told my dad in the hospital, uh, well, you might as well give him a fishing rod. Now, um, there is a picture of me at home at 18 months, walking down the back garden with a fly rod and a fly reel. I used to start fishing on the River Tyvee in Pontryn Vendee Guide. Mum reckoned at the age of three, I used to, she used to give me a little wicker basket, um, put sandwiches and a flask, of, a flask of tea, and I used to walk down to the bridge, and I was only allowed to fish 20 yards above the bridge. And all the old people used to come to, mum used to run the post office, so they used to come and buy, you know, get their pension and buy some food and groceries. So they used to look over, check out it was all right, and tell my mum it was all right. So that's how I started. Uh, you made a life out of it as well. Did, uh, you, was your first move to go beyond Wales? Um, no, I, I actually went to the real world and uh, got a proper job. Um, did that for eight years. Uh, and ended up, I was actually a manager of a leisure centre, um, working for local council working 100 hours a week, getting paid 37. I thought, this isn't very good. Um, but I managed to win the World Casting Championships at the same time. Uh, I know why, really, because I'm first and foremost a fisherman. Um, and you fish in all kinds of weathers. Uh, if it's wet, if it's windy, it doesn't matter, you fish. Whereas a lot of casters, they are just casters. They're used to just doing distance and just doing accuracy. Me being a fisherman, first and foremost, that's why I won the World Championships. Um, and I thought, there and then, I thought, right, okay, it's now or never. Um, and that was 19 and a half years ago. I said, right, okay, I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna see if I can make a living out of it. It's not easy. It's definitely not easy. It might not be easy, but it is easy to envy Howell's lifestyle, flying all over the world and, well, just fishing. As well as his enthusiasm for the sport, one of the things that's likeable about Howell is he has his feet firmly planted on the ground, even if that ground is a few feet underwater. Somebody asked me um, quite recently, where, where would I spend my last day uh, on this earth? Um, would it be after bonefish? Uh, would it be Cuba? Would it be this? Would it be that? Would it be New Zealand? Uh, for me, it would have to be on the River Dee, uh, near St Gothen, catching a nice grayling. And, that, I, I, and if I could catch that grayling, I, I'd end up dying a happy man. Catching Grayling on the Dee is one of the films we have made in our new weekly show, Fishing Britain, which Howell presents. Click on the link on the screen to see him in action. From Wales to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. A viewer called Dan sends in this entertaining time-lapse film about building a duck blind. You won't learn much, but it is fun to watch. Also amusing is this film of a fox asleep in the Ardennes region of France that's about to be surprised by viewer Francesco Caliano. Our third viewer video of the week is Linus Edlund from Sweden. In his 20s, he started filming his hunting and shooting exploits a few years ago. Here's a film by our old friend Simon Whitehead, which he made for Shooting Times' YouTube channel. 
Rabbit shooting at night, the invisible man still doesn't show him smiling. Staying in the UK, Mick Lynch has made falconry, Harris Hawk catching a rabbit, which does what it says on the tin. Now let's go abroad. Chasse au sanglier des journées magiques is Chasse Passion's résumé of his European big game hunting season. Although I sometimes worry about the word awesome when used next to the word hunt, rather as politicians shouldn't use the word clearly when they are about to lie. Awesome waterfowl hunt is forgivable hyperbole as Buck McNeely hunts awesomely for wildfowl in Saskatchewan, Canada. And finally, Blaser Rifles offers Blaser Global Hunting Adventures Nothing Good Comes Easy. National Sporting Clays champion Corey Cruz has always dreamed of hunting in the mountains of Canada's northwest. He hikes the vast and steep terrain for days with guide and outfitter Harrow Obst of Moon Lake Outfitters. Okay, they are flogging a rifle, but it is beautifully filmed. You can click on any of these films to watch them. If you are missing the fishing films and the airgun films, watch our new shows, Airheads and Fishing Britain. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. I have already done the plug for Fishing Britain with Howl. Our other big programme is Airheads. Click on the link on the screen to watch that. We have a tour around a shooting vehicle pimped for night vision. James Marchington has his crossman trained on crows and magpies nicking his breakfast. We have Ted, the magnificent <laughs> airgun centre's um, Peter Max. Zamet, Hot Air, the best of airgunning on YouTube in air streaming, and we look at laser rangefinding with Phil Price. And we are back next week. If you're watching this on YouTube, please don't hesitate to hit the subscribe button that's somewhere around the outside of the screen or go to our webpage, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. This has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye.